Hello, my name is Sarah Griffiths and I am part of the outreach team at the National Archives. We're very excited to introduce to you From May to Etta with Love, the result of a collaborative project with Applied Stories, a digital production company, and Glamorgan Archives. Tonight's performance is a mix of six short plays inspired by photographs held at Glamorgan Archives and written by Cardiff-born writers Danielle Fahiyi and Kyle Lima. The photographs were part of a collection taken over a hundred years ago, mostly by tattoo artist and photographer Fred Peterson. They illustrate the diversity of families living in Butte Town, Cardiff at the time. These beautifully crafted scenes evoke dreams and celebrations, family dynamics and growing up. They're also about love, transience and loss. Among the talented cast are young actors playing the parts of the children. As well as all involved in this production, we should also like to thank Rebecca Eversley Dawes and the Heritage Cultural Exchange in Butte Town, Cardiff for their help identifying some of the subjects in the photographs and providing some background to their lives where possible. Although the stories are fictional, we have used the censuses and collections from the National Archives to enrich them. The plays will run without interval and will be followed immediately by a Q&A between the playwrights, Danielle and Kyle, Finn Kennedy, the Artistic Director of Applied Stories, and Rian Diggins, Senior Archivist at Glamorgan Archives. The audio is accompanied by a transcription However, to enjoy its sound quality at its premium, we recommend that you listen via headphones. Thank you. Oh, I love this number. A fellow jazz fan. Who isn't? I heard they call him King Oliver. Do you mean Joe Oliver? Yeah. My cousin out in New York wrote about seeing him perform one time in Chicago. His musical talent is spreading far and wide. Well, we certainly can play the heck out of the cornet. This place is so... Big. Yeah, but I was thinking homely with your trinkets lying around. <laughs> well, each one is from every country I've travelled. That fits Tiger Bay, then. Everyone is from someplace else. I hope to make my subjects feel comfortable in here. Subjects? I mean... Clients. Oh, I don't know if I qualify as that. Of course you do. This is my first time doing anything like this. We couldn't afford it growing up. Then today is a special day. I guess so, yeah. Please, uh, take a seat over on the chair. Oh, God, look at my dress. I hope we haven't ruined my dress out in that ghastly rain. Oh, you look great. You say that to everyone. I just say what I see, and I can see from your outfit that you want to look your best. Well, I didn't spend a week's wages on this not to look good. Who are the pictures for? My sister, Etta. Something for her to remember me by. Remember you by? I'm leaving. I'm boarding the steamship to New York in two weeks' time. Oh, seeking the American dream. We all have dreams. But going away is about duty. Duty? To who? To my Etta. And our sick mother who needs financial support for her care. They must be proud of you. I'm not sure Etta feels that way. Why not? She thinks I'll not come back. Keep your chin up. I'm trying. I am, but... No, no sorry. I, I meant your actual chin. Oh, <laughs> I see. I left somewhere too. Yeah, probably a little bit older than you are. Never assume a woman's age. Did your mother not teach you that? My apologies. I'm only teasing. So where are you from? Uh, Copenhagen. Where's that? Denmark. Is that the place with the famous sweet pastries? Oh, yes. The sweets of home are famous. I miss the tastes. The smells of home. You're making me hungry, Fred. Mm. But I sometimes have regrets of leaving. Regrets? 
I too left a sick relative to try and follow my dreams. I know. And did you? Some dreams, yes. Others still evade me. What happened to your relative? My mother died not long after I'd arrived in Tiger Bay. I'm so sorry. Just as I was starting my new beginnings, her journey came to an end. That must have been difficult to come to terms with. It was. But not everyone gets to be a part of your new journey. I've learned that sometimes you have to go it alone. But what if it scares you? Even more reason. Change is inevitable. You have to learn to embrace its possibilities. How am I looking? Wonderful. I did notice you've ordered more copies of photographs. Who are they for? Just some agents. No big deal. Talent agents? Yes, but it's not that simple. How come? I am going to be living with my cousin and her husband first as a domestic cleaner. But what do you dream of, me? I'm in New York. Yes. Walking down Fifth Avenue. Go on. I can feel the steam rising up onto the pavement from its pipes, and I look up and see the Coca-Cola ads ahead of me in Times Square. What else can you see? I see the trams come passing by, jam-packed full of businessmen and ladies with small dogs on their laps, all looking like they're heading somewhere important. And where are you heading? Broadway, I suppose. No suppose about yes, it. Yes, you're right. Its dazzling lights are calling me to see them shining on the names of those bright young things who dared to dream. Evelyn Priya, Josephine Baker and... You, one day. For nobody else gave me a thrill With all your faults I love you still It had to be you Wonderful you Had to be you Wow. Now that's some voice, May. Thank you. You must pursue your dream. One day, maybe. It's not wrong to want more for your life. What if Etta is right and I don't return home? You never. And you might not either. But that fear shouldn't stop you from taking the chance to live your dream. Do you really think it's possible? Yes, I do. So much awaits you on the other side of fear. If only you could see what I see in you. Presenting to you for one night only at the Hudson Theatre, Miss May Tiger Brown! If you'd like to come into position in front of the camera. No, Dada. Sophia. Oh, one moment, Mr. Peterson. Please, let me just speak with my daughter. Of course, Mr. Ak Ak um, Achebe. It's Nigerian. Mr. Achebe. Take your time. Thank you. Sophia, come, my girl. Don't you want to have a nice picture with your father? No. It'll be just like the picture your Aunt Nelly has on the mantel over the fireplace in her house. The one of her and your mother. We can put our picture next to it, in a golden frame, just like theirs. They'll be side by side, and you can look at them while you wrap up warm by the fire and have a coach with your Aunt Nelly and... No. While you play tiddlywinks with your Aunt Nelly then, and I can watch and keep score from the picture. It'll be like I'm still with you, even when I'm away at sea. No, I want a picture. Why, my girl? Why not? Because when Mama had a picture taken, she felt sick, and now she's cured. Darling, you think if I have a picture taken, I might go away too? There's no need to be scared of my camera, my dear. You see that 
circle there, well, that is the glass lens. And absolutely nothing will come out of it that can hurt you. It just captures your beautiful image. And then you get a picture of yourself to keep forever. Would you like some more time? Just one moment. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Of course. I need to uh, adjust my lens anyway. My girl, dry your tears. Dada is sad too that Mama had to leave us, but she's with the angels now, and she is always looking over you, loving you, as your forever angel. And when we have our picture together, even when I'm not around, if I'm still away working at sea or somewhere else, you can always look at the picture of us together and see that Dada is with you. How long will he be gone? Nine months. Maybe more. How long's that? I'll be home before Christmas, or well, maybe a bit after. Last long. While I'm away, your Aunt Nelly will take good care of you. Remember I told you about the shipping logs in the paper at the library? Well, Aunt Nelly can take you there. And you can look in the newspaper in the ship section to see what different countries my ship stops in until I'm back home. And at every stop I make, I promise, when I step off my ship, I'll look up to the sky and wave. So when you look in the paper to see where my ship is, it'll be like I'm looking up and waving at you. I wave back. I hope you will. But, but why do you have to go? I need to work so I can provide for you. Give Aunt Nelly money for food to feed you up. And make sure you have pretty dresses to dance in. Like what you and Mama were dancing on St. David's Day and on Nelly's wedding. You remember? Yes. Here, I brought... Mama's dress. Yes, one of her favorites. We can have it in our picture with us. It'll be like she's right here with us, dancing beside us. Would you like that? Yes. And I have another surprise for you. Mama's pills. And her bracelet. And her ring. They are yours now, to keep very safe. You can wear them in the picture. Thank you, Dada. You're welcome, my darling. Here, let me help you put them on. Perfect. Can I hold Mama's dress? Of course you can, my sweet girl. Mr. Peterson, we are ready now. Wonderful. If you'd like to make yourselves comfortable, perhaps if we have you sitting shut and your lovely daughter standing just there next to you, very nice. And perhaps father holding daughter's hand. Here, my girl. Can we share Mama's dress and hold it together? Lovely. And here we go. That's my girl. I love you too, Dada. Ah, nice to meet you. Gwen, Leonard, and Elvira. And you, Mr. Peterson. Oh, just call me Fred, please. Say hello, kids. Hello. Hello. There's a treasure box full of uh, fun toys and clothes for you to try. Wow. Wow. Mummy, look at the pretty dress. Mummy, can I wear the sailor's hat? No. Put them down and come back here, please. It's okay. The chest is for the kids. Though some adults can get excited too. Thanks, but they're in their Sunday best for today, so no need for a change of clothes. Kids, back now, I said. Oh, Mum, it's not fair. That dress is pretty on mine. Don't be rude, you two. It's okay. Uh, take a seat. Oh, you're welcome to stand. Go on, kids. And Mum too? Oh, no thank you. It's not about me. The photo is to send to their father at sea. But the package for family photos offers more than one. Yes, but I'm not dressed appropriately. For who? I can't. 
I insist. Please, don't make a fuss. If it's money that you're worried about... I'm not a charity case. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to offend. My husband might be at sea, but I'm not defenceless. I wasn't assuming. I just thought you might like to join your children. Mummy, sit with us. Just sit with your brother. There's a good girl. Mummy, please. Daddy would like a photo of all of us as well. You said he likes to see you smile. Your package includes five copies. You could also send to extended family at Christmas. I don't like standing on my own. It's scary. Well, I don't want you scared, darling. So if you really want me to be in the photo with you, I will be. I do. Me too. Okay. Stand close to me. Great. Uh, so if you all stand or sit towards me, uh, whatever you prefer. Ah, now that's looking lovely from here. If I'd have known I'd been in the photos today, I would have worn something more suitable. Oof. I can see some of last night's dinner on my skirt. All people will see is a loving family photo with a doting mother and her beautiful children. Mummy, why is he pointing that towards us? What's going to happen? Hold still. He's about to take a photo. Do you have children, Mr. Peterson? Fred, please. Uh, no, uh, I do not. Not yet, anyway. Well, men do have the luxury of time in that department. I'm not sure my wife is able. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, you're fine. It's a common question. You really don't have to say any more. It's okay. Families come in here all the time. I'm used to seeing children. But you still have a family. Yes, back in Denmark. No, I mean you and your wife. Well, I suppose we are. In our own way, yes. Although my wife Ginny is forever asked why a woman of childbearing age doesn't have children yet. Waste no thought on others' intrusive opinions. If I cared how the world saw my family, I would struggle to leave the house. I wonder, did your family have problems during the riots? We live in Barry, so away from the riots at Tiger Bay. The threatening crowds did gather there after a fatal stabbing. <laughs> Were you safe? We managed to stay away and keep safe. That's good. Many good men were seriously injured, or worse, including friends of mine. I'm so sorry. I just hope one day soon we care more for the content of one's heart rather than the colour of their skin. We are all made in God's image, are we not? Yes. Lemmy, can we sit on your lap? I'm tired. You weren't tired five minutes ago when you were happy to raid the treasure chest. Yes, but... If you stay still for the photos, how about I get you an iced bun from the bakery? Hmm? Like your father used to buy us. Promise? Yes. And me. Of course you two. So, is your husband working as a sailor at sea? Yes. He's part of the British Navy. He was recruited back when he was in the West Indies. It's one of the few jobs he's allowed to do. His skin is too dark for certain jobs, yeah? It makes me feel sick with anger sometimes. Mummy, are you angry? Not now, darling, no. I miss Daddy. I miss him too. Give us a punch. <laughs> I'm sure these photos will bring him comfort. I hope so. But I sometimes feel I'm not enough. That they need their father too. When I think of my mother, I think of her always staying strong, despite struggling. Anyway, that's what your children will remember in the days and times ahead. Well, I must say thank you, Fred, for listening to my troubles and for making the children and I so at ease. Oh, it was my pleasure. I hope you were glad to be a part of it. You surprised me. I was. Officer Hines? Officer Hines, letter for you. Thank you, sir.
my darling Leonard. We hope this finds you well and makes you smile. We miss you so much, but know that you're working hard to provide and come home to us soon. Stay safe. All our love. Your Gwenny, Leonard and Elvira. Mr. Peterson, hello. Your door was a bit open. Uh, are we a little early for the pictures? Ah, hello, Emmanuel. Uh, I was uh, just uh, preparing some potential backdrops for your picture, but uh, please hey, come. Put away your Be careful in here, son. No, no running around, Joseph. You'll trip. Yes, Mama. Sorry, he's excitable. That's quite all right. Uh, this is my wife, Linda. I showed her the brochure you gave me. Hello. A pleasure. Can I take your bags? Oh, thank you. And this is our little prince, Joseph. He's very spirited. <laughs> yes, I can see. He's thrilled to be having his picture taken for the first time with his mother and father. The king and queen. King and queen? Oh, that's what he calls us. I wouldn't mind having King George and Queen Mary's fortune, that's for sure. Well, you certainly are all looking very fine. All three of you in your attire. Very nicely turned out. Like royalty indeed. I'm a prince. That's right, my son. Come here. A descendant of Chief Niagua, king of the Mende people. Mende? My people of Sierra Leone. So you, you really do come from royalty. My boy here comes from kings of my land, making him a Mende prince. Isn't that right, son? Yes, your highness. And I'm from Splot, originally. Perfect parent. Well, I truly am privileged indeed to be able to photograph a royal family. Now, let's put our little prince down, shall we, Dada? And stop creasing his new suit. We only just bought it and can't be affording a new one if you rip it, Emmanuel, with all your lifting. Down you go, son. Forgive us. Uh, where would you like us to, uh... uh we can have you, uh, just over here. Joseph, stop running! Listen to your mother, son. Joseph, watch out for the camera! Oh, no. Oh, flaming heck. I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. Let me check it. Son, you must be careful. Say sorry to Mr. Peterson. Sorry. I'm sure I can fix it. Oh, it must cost a fortune. How are we going to pay for that? We will. I will pay for it. How? With what? We've not got much left from your dock work and these photos were a stretch. I said they were an unnecessary expense. I wanted to have a picture of us all before I go to sea. Exactly. And you're shipping out in a few days. You don't have your pay from that for a while yet. But can't you... Can your royal chief send you some money from back home? You know all oh, that's long gone. That's what colonial rule does for you. It might just be the casing which has come loose. Half pay. Half pay from the shipping company when I'm away. Tell them you're my wife. You can get some money from them soon. Give some to Mr. Peterson when it comes and we'll pay the rest as soon as I get my wage off the ship. I'll send it back to you with extra and you can pay the gentleman. It won't be enough. If I angle the camera base to tilt the lens axis up... I can help. No. no. Maybe I can sell food out the front room like Mrs. Flowers two doors down. Madam. I can make up pots of that peanut chicken soup you taught me, Emmanuel. Madam, sell it to the seaman. Oh, but it still won't be enough. Not with three mouths to feed. But with me at sea, it'll just be two. You and Joseph. And the baby. What baby? Our baby. A baby? Oh my... We're having a baby? You're pregnant? What's pregnant? Yes, Emmanuel, of course I'm pregnant. Can you see I was getting bigger? I thought you were full from all the peanut soup. What? Madam, it's all right. No harm done. Mainly loosen some of the film holder. Uh, just a little tightening needed. Luckily, most of it landed on my pile of backdrops. Cushion the fall. Should work fine. Oh, thank God. Thank you, God. Well, uh... Let's get you all in position for your picture, shall we? Uh, oh, yes. Of course. If we have Mother sitting here, 
and father stood proudly here and the little prince just there. <laughs> oh, and uh, congratulations on your soon-to-be new arrival. Oh, yes, thank you. You hear that, son? You're getting a new brother or sister. No, a prince or a princess. <laughs> That's right. A complete royal flush. Oh, never mind royal flush. I'm having a hot flush with all this excitement. Give me that brochure, Emmanuel. I need to fan myself. All right. Your Royal Highness, if you wouldn't mind lowering your makeshift fan. <laughs> nice and still and... Oh, David, Michael, look over there. One minute, Julio. I'm sewing my flower pin out. It keeps coming off. Ah, I'll just put it in my pocket. Oh, look over there. There's a photographer taking photographs in the corner. I've never had one before. I'm going to get one. Me too. Let's do it. Come on. Mike? Yeah, go on then. The photographer deserves to take a picture of at least one good-looking fella at this wedding today. Ha ha ha! Hello there, gentlemen! Don't you all look smart? Uh, would you like a picture? I, I would indeed, Mr... Peterson. Let me just adjust the height levels. <laughs> so, uh, bride or groom? No, we're just guests. Oh, Dave, I think he means who we're here for. The groom's my brother, Mr. Peterson. And me and Dave are the bride's brothers. Wonderful. Beautiful service, I imagine, in St. Mary's. Beautiful service, beautiful bride, and some beautiful bridesmaids, too. I'm going to get a picture of me to give to one. That bridesmaid, Dave. The one who gave me the eye. The evil eye, you mean? Oh, all right, gents. We'll do a few different ones. Uh, how about all three standing? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, and... She didn't look too happy when you swiped the bouquet from her in midair. I gave it back to her though, didn't I? And it's a bouquet, not a bouquet. Daft does a brush you. Oh, watch it, sunshine. That's my little brother you're talking about. And your brother only just married into my family today. So you're both on probation as far as I'm concerned. And uh, how about two of you sitting perched on the chair? <laughs> Oh, that's it. Still got to suss out whether or not you're decent enough to associate with us. Ah, give over, Michael. I told you I've knocked about with Julia for quite a while now. Since before we left school. He's all right. And so's my brother, too. You better be good to our sister. Treat her right. She don't have to worry. He'll take good care of her. I know he's shipping out next week, but he's a hard worker. Always seeing my mum right. And sending money over to a Nala in Cape Verde with his donkey greaser work off the dock. He's a good egg. No matter where he is in the world, he'll see your sister right. He won't break her heart. Unlike you with the bridesmaid. I had my eye on her for a while, actually. I saw her once when I was swimming in the canal. She was splashing about with some of her girlies from Cardiff High. <laughs> and you think you've got a chance? Bit old for you, ain't she? Who are you kidding, kid? She might be a year or so older than me, maybe five. But if I'm old enough to earn a wage shimmying up the chimney with a brush in my hand, I'm old enough to be doing some wooing. And who are you calling kids? You're about two minutes older than me. And why don't we have you, uh, Julio, is it? Yeah, let's have you sitting and you two stand behind. That's it. And... The point is, you want to make some proper money for wooing. You want to pack in that chimney sweep lark and sell wood like us. Odd splinter now and then, but the money makes up for that. I was starting to get a bit stuck. Last chimney I was up, getting bigger, see? Occupational hazard. Not that I should be even going up a chimney no more. What with labour laws and that, should just be assisting the boss. Yes, I think that last shot was the best, boys. I'll just uh, readjust my camera for the next people. <laughs> oh, there's a queue starting. You know what, boys? 
I think I will get in the wood game too. Get a few more shillings in my back pocket and less soot on my lungs. Then I'll really be able to wind it down with that girl. I'll come wait with you two doing the words. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang fire. It ain't that simple. We got higher ups who may not want another employee. But we could put a good word in, Mike. What's in it for us? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Peterson. How many pictures do we get? <laughs> These are for the bride and groom as a memory of their special day and who attended. How about this? You get your chimney cleaned out for free by the best we've been at it. And I get a cup of coffee to each for me and my friends here. Free, is it? I d Two chimneys cream for free. Done. Pop over to my office in the week and we'll sort something out. Uh, here's my card and address. Ah, oh, good on you, Julia. You're welcome, boys. It'll be my chimney sweep swang song. Not bad, kid. Not bad. Maybe I will put in a good word for you with our boss about the wood. And that bridesmaid, too. She's our cousin, after all. Your cousin? Yeah, wait, because your brother's married into our family. That sort of makes you related to us. And her. Really? Yeah, I think it makes you our auntie. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha ha, so funny. Only joking. So you're going to give the photo to your future bride-to-be then? Reckon I will. I'll give another copy to my brother to take with him when he ships out. He told me he'll stop at Cape Verde. He's going to be our nana. He can give the photo to her. We've written letters to each other, but she's never seen me. Now she can. Just a shame she'll have to look at your two ugly mugs and all. Oh, oh, watch it. I'm not joking. Come on, let's go watch the bride and groom's first dance. Yes, auntie. Yes, auntie. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he's not showing up because of this morning's outburst? Ernie! I need to practice my hand-to-eye coordination. There's a cricket match on the weekend. That's not the way to do it. Cricket balls don't bounce. Pick it up. Now. Um, I think we have a problem. Yeah? You put a dent in the floor. I didn't mean to. Explain that to Mr. Peterson then. Fine, but don't expect Eugene to be here. Why not? He told you he didn't want to come, but you didn't listen. You never do. He was trying to wind me up, but I'm not rising to it. Hello, boys. I'm Fred Peterson. I'll be taking your photos for today. I believe you're having them done for your father away at sea? Um, yes, uh, Mr. Peterson. He's serving away, and it's his birthday in a few weeks. I'm Eric, and this is Ernie. Eugene is late, but he'll be here shortly. <clears throat> Ernie, don't you have something to say to Mr. Peterson? There's a dent in your floor from my cricket ball. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cause it. Ah. Okay. Well, lucky for you, it's a very old floor with lots of dents. So I wouldn't be able to distinguish yours from any other. He's very sorry about it. <laughs> Not to worry. So your mother mentioned doing this for your father's birthday? Is she not with you? She has to work at the Havana Bakery today, but she said that I was old enough to come with the others. Sorry, Emily. I, uh, remembered. I had to run errands for Mum. Since when did you run errands for Mum? You don't know what Mum asked me to do. She thinks I'm capable too. Yeah, more like you were hanging around with that tall rag Jimmy. You know he's going to get nicked one day soon. Right, okay, well, let's get on. <laughs> Good that you're all here now. Uh, if you position yourselves where you feel most comfortable... I'm going to stand in the middle. You're the shortest and youngest. It wouldn't look right. I'm going to stand as well. Just do as I say, all right? Stop trying to be our dad. Ow! I wouldn't ever try to do that. Clipping me round the head like Dad would if I ever stepped out of line. Yeah, nothing like that at all. Enough, Eugene. Uh, okay, boys. 
Let's focus on the importance of these photographs. Uh, let's have an uh, eldest and youngest sat either side of middle sibling. Like I was about to suggest. Stop being so smug. And people say I'm the immature one. <laughs> well, that, that's looking good now, boys. How long has your father been away? Six months. He'll be back soon. We don't know that. Why have you got to say that? I'm just saying. We don't know when he'll be back. He's going to help me with my catching drills. Isn't that a little out of your reach? <laughs> you won't be laughing when I get chosen one day to play for Wales. Wales? You ever seen a black boy play for Wales? No chance. Okay, boys. Uh, first photo, stay still. <sighs> what are you doing? I held my breath. That was stupid. Okay, relax, boys. Think of how your father would wish to see you looking. That's better. What were you thinking of? Dad fighting hard and being brave on the front line. You do know he's not on the front line, don't you? He is. He's not allowed. No black soldiers are. Leave it, Eugene. I heard Mum talking the other day to Mrs. Hines. Black soldiers are kept doing jobs the white soldiers won't do. Like cutting down trees, unloading ships. That's not true. Eric, tell him to shut up. Look, we need to concentrate for Mr. Peterson to take our photos. I think we got a good one there. Is it true, though? How about we take some individual photographs as well? So you have options? Okay, yeah. Um, good idea. Great. Who's first? He deserves to know the truth. It's not the time. Why would you even bring it up like that? I hate you and you suck at trying to be like Dad. Ernie, come back. I, I didn't mean... I'm not trying. Eugene. Go after him. It's your mess to fix. I'm not asking. Fine. I, I didn't want to be a part of this anyway. I'm sorry. Do you, do you need some time? No. It, it's fine. Mum can bring them back for their individual photos another time. I'm done trying to help. It's never easy stepping up, being man of the house. I'm not. You're taking on your father's duties. That's never easy. I, I don't have a choice. I was about your age when my father died. My father's not dead. Apologies, I, I didn't mean to imply... Eugene's right. He'll be back soon. I just meant that my father's duties became mine in his absence. Yeah. Let's get on. We, we don't have to. I'm not ready. That's okay. Neil will want my help, even if I was. They'll need you in time. Yeah, well, what if I'm not cut out for it? I had to look after my younger brothers and mum when my father died. It wasn't easy. How did you do it? <laughs> oh, well, I failed miserably at first. Your quarrelling with your brothers today took me back and got me thinking of the arguments we used to get into. <laughs> Much worse than yours. <laughs> did things get any better? In time, I found my feet, but then as I got older, I had this urge to leave, see the world. You left them? Yes. I should have handled it better, but I didn't want to get stuck in a small town. Did you see them again? I haven't been back since. Do you miss them? Every day. I was young, impatient. I didn't want to get left behind. But being young is about making mistakes. Yeah, well I don't feel like I had the time to keep getting it wrong. Especially if something happens to Dad out there. It's no good to think that way. You've just got to be there when they're ready to talk and ask for help. And will they? In time, yes. Right now, all they need to know is that you're there to catch them in case they fall. Oh, that reminds me. I have something for you. A cricket bat? Ernie mentioned earlier. My father used to play with the gentlemen of Holland. The, this is too big of a gesture, Mr. Peterson. I don't know if I'll get the opportunity to pass it on to another young man, so will you accept? In that case, I will. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. 
I was just doing my job. Yes, but... It's okay. I know. 